Okay, here we go. All right. Well, now, now we are getting into it. We are getting into the questions, the, the things that you people want to hear. Listen, are you broke? Are you so fucked up that you don't want to talk to a therapist because you can't be in the same room with another human being? Why don't you call the, why don't you write into a bald, freckled cunt who has no training whatsoever? You know, let's see what he has to say about shit. All right, things I should have said. Oh, this is this, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now, this segment is blowing up. Things I should have said. We've all been there. Something happens, right? You're shocked. The moment passes. It's too late. And then as you're driving home a year later, two years later, fucking on your deathbed, you're like, you know what the fuck I should have said? I saw one of those moments. I was watching uh, my wife had on the Kardashians. I, I've just quit. I've tapped out. I'm like the fucking Maple Leafs, okay? I'm up three games to one, and I finally just said, you know what? I'm not going to, I don't give a fuck. I'd like my summer vacation to begin now by just having not thinking and just let you just roll over me. So now I'm watching the fucking Kardashians. And I got to tell you something, the fucking American psycho looking dude, Scott, first of all, I got to respect that man's drinking game. He got shit faced with one of the Kardashian brother. They were fucking pounding, pounding drinks. And he got absolutely hammered and he just went off the fucking rails and was doing like a stand-up set, shit face, just trashing everybody, trashing this woman. Hey, sweetheart, don't look at my cock. Look at his cock. He was out of his, wearing a robe. He was out of his fucking mind. It was tremendous. It was tremendous. Until, until he was shit faced that night and he was telling this old waiter to shut the fuck up. And he took a hundred dollar bill and stuffed it into his mouth. And the the waiter didn't swing on him. He didn't say anything. You know, he's a fucking working the Kardashian VIP thing. He's working his tip. He's probably thinking I got too much. Yeah, I'm thinking I got too much to lose. And that's the moment. The people who have nothing to fucking lose do not have. You know what I should have said? They could have a segment going, you know, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. Right. So this fucking guy. So I, I really I had a ton of empathy for that guy, he's out there busting his ass and that fucking drunk asshole, you know, belittled him. And the second I thought that, I was like, I know exactly what that feels like. That guy getting that money stuffed in his fucking mouth. I know exactly what he's going to be. I should have. Why didn't I fucking punch him? It's going to make him hate himself. Uh, but we've all been there, which is the purpose of this fucking segment. Things I should have said. Number one. Hey, Billy Bagpipe. I like that. That's a new one. I listened to the recent podcast and thought about uh, and thought of the worst things i ever blurted out well that's that's that should be things i shouldn't have said jesus christ you guys are like me you don't even listen um all right i'll read it anyways it was kind of funny years later but still pretty stupid i was in high school in the early 2000s i was heavily bullied one day during math class an announcement was made that everyone from my gym class had to report to a lecture hall i had no idea why and later found out it was because someone stole money As I stood up to leave my math class and report to my lecture hall, my annoying bully classmates started asking why and making jokes at my expense. I got sick of it and said, we all bombed the school. Oh, boy. I was pulled out of my next class after math by a social worker. (laughs) She started asking me about my home life. Oh, God, now it's your parents' fault. Because of what I said, I explained that I was joking, but she said it was a big deal and she would have to talk to my mom who was picking me up. I started crying. Oh, God. And then you cried on top of it. These are the thing. These are the stories that all great men have. This is what we're all running from. These moments. Uh, <laughs> this is what we're compensating for. You started crying. I've been there because I was afraid of being grounded. I was, in fact, grounded for a month, which is plenty of time to learn how to build a bomb. What are your parents thinking? The next day, my principal told me I would either get get three days in school suspension or five days out. I chose out. I like that. I like that decision. There you go. There you go. He said I was not getting an expulsion hearing because I had no past behavior issues. He was also like, I also don't want to have to fucking, you know, 
look under my car every time I start it up and change my routine of how I go home. That's what the principal's thinking. Uh, if I said this now, I probably would have been expelled. Definitely do not recommend saying the B word in a public place for any reason. Uh, hope to catch you in a city near me soon. Okay, people, this is like things I should have said. But if you want to say things I shouldn't have said, we can do that segment too. I don't, I'm easy. I don't give a fuck. I'm watching the Kardashians. I don't give a shit anymore. My, 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 I've completely sold out. All right, number two. Dear Billy eats too much cake, bitch tits, burr. Well, that was just, you know, too long to be funny, but, you know, just enough detail to be mean. All right. Hey, hi, I am 28-year-old male. Uh, 28 years old was the last time I had abs. And I'll tell you right where I lost them. I went to that Carney hot dog fucking train car. And I went in there. Somebody goes, have you ever tried chili cheese fries? And I said, no, I have not. And I ate those fucking thing. And my belly has been distended ever since. But they were delicious. Speaking of which, I went back there the, uh, yesterday or two days ago. Because um, I was hungry. I needed something quick. And what's better than a hot dog? Quick, right? And they had the, uh, the Red Baron. Oh, freckles. Oh, fire engine Red Freckles got the Red Baron. It was absolutely delicious. I got one. It was perfect. And shout out to them. All right. Anyway. Hi, I'm a 28-year-old male, and I have a what I should have said story. A few years back, I worked with a girl, and because of the laws of proximity and horniness, we started dating. <laughs> Both our jobs conveniently started ending at the same time, so we were both looking for jobs at a similar time as well. Uh, I found a job pretty quickly while she went through interviews. Finally, after a few months, she found a pretty awesome job, and they hired her. Good for her, right? Well, little did I know she would turn into a total cunt because power and psychopaths mix like coke and booze. Did she mean a new guy at the job, I'm guessing? Well, we traded stories about our new job, and she constantly one up me. She even would brag about how she was making more money right to my face. Oh, God. There we go. That's a, that's a great one. This is what feminists would say. Well, you should be strong enough. You should be strong. It's like, well, if a guy was making more money than you and he threw it in your face, would you enjoy that? That's different. Why is that, hairy leg fucking person? Because it happened to me. All right. One day as the relationship was ending and I was finding self-respect again. <laughs> We were riding in the car and she was being cunty as usual. She blurted out, I always tell my coworkers that if they ever need me, my door is always open now. Now, at the time, I didn't really respond because I still wanted a banger, but this made me lose it on the inside. Literally, as soon as she got out of the car and was out of earshot, I said to myself, well, bitch, you work in a fucking cubicle, so you don't have much of a choice. <laughs> It was just the last straw in a series of ridiculous bragging from her. Anyway, I think about that at least once a month. I kind of want to call her just to say it, but fuck it. Water under the bridge, I guess. Um, yeah, dude, it's, it is. That, and you had a great line, too. I mean, dude, if you did that right then and then broke up with her on top of that, there's a reason why that happens in movies. Because it's a movie. It's not real. To fucking be able to do that in real time. I remember one time I, I was on this. Uh, I think I've told this story before. That's all of my stories at this point. When you do a podcast solo for the better part of fucking two decades. Um, I did this, uh, this trip. It was me, my brother, my grandmother at the time. I know. We, we were great grandkids. Okay. She was alone at the time. We said, hey, we're going to go see the Southwest. Why don't you come along with us, right? So she, we'd take her to all the tourist sites during the day and at night. Me and my brother would go out and get ripped. You know, we had a great fucking time. So anyway, but we brought her along, Grand Canyon and all of that shit. So at one point, we went into some fucking restaurant somewhere around the Grand Canyon. And we went in there and there was some fucking waitress. And she fucking hated her job. And she was being, it was so, I look back to it now. It was almost like an SNL character. And she was just going like, she was like, can I help you? Would you like anything to drink? Like she was <laughs> talking to us like that, right? So finally it came around to me and I just go, uh, yeah, can I get uh, two eggs over easy? 
uh, some bacon and uh, some toast. She goes, what kind of toast? And I go, white toast. Right? And it got real fucking quiet. And she glared at me. And I glared at her for half a second. And then I looked away because I was like, uh, this is going to be, I don't even know why. I fucking, I bitched up. I looked away. But uh, when she left, I remember my grandmother was very proud of me. She, she, you know, her old fucking, you know, lived through the depression grip, grabbed my hand. I go, is that too much? And she goes, no, her, her attitude is terrible. Oh, her attitude is terrible. Because that was, she came up in the time where the customer was always right. But then I'm not going to lie to you, man. I kept my eye on her the whole time when she was making my toast to make sure she didn't fucking spit on it. But that, that's the closest I think I ever came. To in, 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 in real, before I became like a comedian, um, and I can do it on stage just because that's what you have to do. I learned to do that, but still off stage, I still can't, I still don't do it. I still don't do it. I can, I can definitely like, you know, do a tirade of F bombs, you know, and then make whatever, what, whatever the other person just did pale in comparison to whatever the fuck I just said. I'm not talking about not being able to, I've, I've done that. Uh, you know, because of this time, I can't even say what the fuck I said. Um, but I actually, this guy, uh, I'm going to tell this story at some point. I'm just going to tell the story. But I have to tell it to someone who's gay. <laughs> what I said to this guy in a crosswalk that I almost ran over because I didn't see him and I tried to apologize to him and he wouldn't have it. Uh, whatever, I'll tell that story someday. All right, number three. Hey, Billy, see, hey, Billy, see through tits. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I love it. Keep fat shaming me. I'm on my way. I already dropped fucking weight. Once you stop eating cake, you know, and you drink a smoothie, it just fuck it, and you go for walks, it melts away. Uh, I thought I'd chime in on the passive-aggressive cunt segment you got going on here. A few years ago, I got out of the Navy and went to a bar in my hometown. I hadn't been to it in years. It was full of people I went to high school with, and for the most part, I got a pretty warm welcome. However, one guy wasn't so happy to see the attention I was getting. There's always that guy. He was the rich kid at my school who never made it out of that town. Uh, Oh, that's a tale that's as fucking long as your fucking, I don't know what. All right, short of the long, he sits down next to me and loudly says, so what exactly did you do over there? Referring to my time in the Navy. I replied with a short job description. He replied with, oh, so nothing that important. He smiled and looked around at the other people sitting at the bar. In my drunken happiness to be home with friends and family, I didn't catch the slight until days later. Ugh. The thoughts I have about that are criminal, and luckily things happen the way they did. Uh, thanks for the podcast, and go fuck yourself. I know, dude. You just carry that. You just carry that. I know. What, what do you wish you would have said to that guy? Oh, so nothing that important. Yeah, I, I'm, I, yeah, I was inspired by what you've been doing with your life or something. I'd say that stinks too. What do you say to that guy? I think you got to go Clint Eastwood. Just fucking knock him out, right? Oh, so nothing that important. Yeah, I can't give you any of my old school rep- responses because all those words you can't say anymore, you get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the way it is. That is the way it is. Um, all right. So here we go. The Montreal Canadiens. You know, it's kind of funny, though, you know, when you really think about it, that the Montreal Canadiens have been around as long as they have. And Vegas is a new team. But they have so established themselves. you got to give it up to the Vegas Knights, how much they've established themselves so quickly going to the NHL Finals. Uh, Stanley Cup Finals, I don't know, whatever their first year was, a couple, two, three years ago. Um, was that against the uh, Capitals, I want to say? Yes, it was, 2018. Um, I don't know. We we will see. We will see what happens. But uh, I was like everybody else going, this is going to be Vegas and Tampa in the final. And all of a sudden, it's looking like, is it going to be the Islanders and Canadians? Way back in the fucking day, the the people that ended. 
And then the Canadians could avenge the fact that the Islanders ended their almost decade long dominance um, of the NHL. Well, they sort of shared the dominance with Tampa, Tampa, with Toronto until 1967. I don't know. All right, guys, I'm all alone in the house right now, and I'm just starting to babble, you know, beyond what I usually do here on the podcast. Um, so I came up a little bit short. It's only 54 minutes, but you know what? God damn it. It is fucking, it is, uh, Father's Day. Ah, fucking, I'll tough it out. I'll do another fucking five minutes for you. All right. You want to hear the music I've been, I've been playing for my kid. Uh, so I've been playing with the King- Kingston Trio and some Glenn Campbell, this, this song called Gentle On My Mind. And I kind of got into this song because I saw him play. There's a if you go on YouTube and you watch him play it live, and uh, you see Willie Nelson and all these guys just sitting there watching him playing, it's fucking amazing. Like, um, but the fucking lyrics, it's a really sad song. To the point, I'm like, is this like, is this just me or is this song really fucking sad? It's kind of about this guy who has this chick that he really loves, you know? But he's always away, and he's not near her. But she's when he thinks of her, she's always gentle on his mind, which means he loves her. So the whole fucking song, I'm like, well, then what the fuck are you going all around everywhere? Why don't you go home to her? And the song was making me sad, and I realized, like, oh, wait a minute. This is what the fuck I did. This is how I fucked up a bunch of relationships. This is how like I, you know what? This is how fucked up I was as a, as a kid. When there was a girl that I liked, rather than going over and saying hello and asking her out, I just started fantasizing about me playing the electric guitar or something, or fucking being a comedian or I don't know what, fucking running into a house fire. I would just have these hero fantasies, Right. And even in the hero fantasy, I never talked to her. She just saw me do what I did, and then that was it. (laughs) I was a fucking mess. So I'm just sitting there reading the lyrics. Oh, this is the wrong song. This is a song called Dreams of the Everyday Housewife, which uh, if you want to know why the woman's movement ever happened, just read those fucking lyrics. Jesus Christ. Um it's like a tribute to the woman who just gives up everything that she ever had. And now she's old and she's looking at old pictures of her when guys were all interested in her and now they're not. And now she's just a wrinkled housewife and she gave it all up for me and my dreams. I mean, there's, there's a, there's a, you know, as much as a dick as I am, I, I, it's not like I don't understand where all this fucking shit from the ladies is coming from. Um, Oh, gee, Bill, thank you for extending the olive branch. You freckled cunt. You're welcome. Um, All right. His gentle on my mind. Uh, Let me read some of these sad fucking lyrics. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. That makes me tend to leave my sleeping bag rolled up and stashed behind your couch. So I'm like, all right, good. He's settling down. And it's knowing I'm not shackled by forgotten words and bonds and the ink stains that have dried upon some lines that keep you in the back roads by the rivers of my memory and keep you ever gentle on my mind. So I'm like, oh, wait, what the fuck? The back roads of your memory. No, the back roads and by the rivers of your memory, like she's in your past. So I feel bad for this guy because it's like, well, stop fucking running around like a goddamn idiot. And why don't you go to this person? And you know why? Because he can't. He doesn't know how to love. So instead, he's when I walk around some railroad track and find that you're moving on the, this fucking guy, he's on railroad tracks. Where else is he? And still might run in silence. Tears of joy might stain my face. This is when he's hammered, thinking about how much he loves her, mumbling, saying all the shit he should have said to her, but now he's saying it next to some fucking hobo in a campfire. And the summer sun might burn me till I'm blind but not to where I cannot see you walking on the back roads by the rivers flowing gentle on my mind. Ah, Jesus Christ. (laughs) 
And these songs will continue to be written until it's acceptable for a man to acknowledge that crying is actually a, a viable fucking emotion that you're supposed to use as opposed to fucking pushing it down and going playing a contact sport. You know, fucking, you know, I, I don't know, beating the shit out of some fucking weaker kid who then stands up and makes a bomb threat in the fucking math class. Sorry, it's all connected. But anyway, the song's called... <laughs> Gentle on My Mind by Glenn Campbell. You should check it out. And uh, I don't know. If you're living that life, you know, it's never too late to turn it around. Maybe you could go cheer up that fucking waitress in Arizona that I had 30 fucking years. Look at me. I'm tying it all, all the loose ends up. With 19 seconds to go. I'm like the Milwaukee Bucks here. You guys didn't think I was going to pull out a full hour. Well, guess what I did? That's it. That's the Monday morning podcast. Go fuck yourselves, and I will check in on you on, uh, what is what is the day after Wednesday? Sorry, i got to make an hour. It's uh, Thursday. Bam, I did an hour. All right, happy Father's Day, everybody. I'll see you.